What's going on guys? I'm Brian and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the Freezer 7X from Arctic. This is a true budget CPU cooler coming in at for just under $25. Now I want to make this clear that this cooler right here is not aimed at vastly outperforming something like the Wraith Prism in pure cooling performance. Instead, I think this cooler right here is really aimed at improving your cooling performance by a little bit, but more than that, I think it's aimed at improving your noise performance by quite a large margin. Let's take a closer look at this guy right here and why and who might actually be interested in picking this CPU cooler up. For transparency, they did send this cooler over for review, but as most of you guys probably already know by now, it's not going to impact my review in any way. So let's start by talking about what comes with this in the box. So the first thing is going to be, of course, your cooler and then your fan, and then you also, which will be attached all together, and then you also are going to get all the installation hardware that you're going to need for whether you're using it on an AMD platform or an Intel based system. Now this is inapplicable with every single platform. I'll leave a link in the description box below that kind of leads you to what platforms this is actually applicable with. But basically most of the modern CPU sockets will be able to use this cooler. The last thing that comes with this cooler in the box is going to be paperwork as per usual. And instead of getting an actual manual, Arctic sends you a QR code that when you scan it, it sends you to their website that shows you how to install this cooler on whatever socket you're trying to install it. It's super nice, super easy to follow, and I love that Arctic does this. Taking a look at the design, this cooler is pretty straightforward. It's a nice compact single tower design. It's standing at about 132 and a half millimeters tall. It's about 110 when it comes to like the actual depth here. And then it's about 74 and a half millimeters wide when it comes to the actual width. You'll find the Arctic logo at the very top, which is actually attached to the 92 millimeter fan that's right here. It's like all one molding. You can pop this off by like kind of pushing on the sides. It'll just pop off. It's kind of hard to get off on this side, but it will pop off if you put, you know, put enough pressure onto it. So if you need to replace it, that's cool. It has a pretty nice and tight fin array right here. So that should help with heat dissipation. And then moving to the very, very bottom, you're going to have your cold plate, which has two copper heat pipes that extend off of it. And this pad actually, when you first get the, the cooler, you'll see that it has thermal paste pre-applied. Obviously I tested this cooler. That's why mine doesn't have thermal paste, but when you get it, you will have thermal paste pre-applied and that's why it doesn't actually come in the box with the cooler. You also have these little hinges on the side right here. And these are going to be to allow you to mount it to whatever platform you're using. If it's AMD, you'll be mounting it to the black retainers that come with your motherboard by default. And if it's Intel, there is an adapter that you will tighten these guys down onto that will allow you to attach it to an Intel based CPU socket. Speaking of assembly, this is going to be one of the easiest installation processes when it comes to coolers. I actually only have an AMD based system. So I'll, I'll run you guys through how to do it on an AMD based system. So the AM4 platform, if you have an Intel system, I will be leaving a link to how to install it down in the description box below. So go down there, check it out. I'll be leaving you to right directly to the, the, the website that Arctic gives you. Your installation guide is wonderful for you know, the vast majority of the products and it'll help you get started here too. So if you have Intel again, go to the website, AMD, I'm going to walk you guys through that right now. So basically to start, there's going to be these little retainer clips that are on the side right here, and there's gonna be a screw. It's gonna be tightened all the way up. You're gonna to wanna to loosen these so that they're easier to attach to the black retainers on your AMD motherboard. Then you're gonna to wanna to pop off the little plastic cover that's gonna be protecting the thermal paste that's pre-applied to the cold plate. After that, go ahead and attach the retainer clips to the black retainers on your motherboard. Tighten down these little screws and plug your fan in. Easy as that. Make sure that when you do tighten these little screws that you go back and forth. You don't want to tighten one side then tighten all the way on the other side. You want to make sure you tighten a little bit on one side and then go to the next and go back and forth until they're nice and tight. You want to make sure that your CPU coolers are attached evenly and you have even mounting pressure for them. I do have one quick comment. I think it's very, very easy to install this cooler. I think it's a great design in general. The only thing I didn't like about it was these little retainer clips that are on the side right here. They're kind of hard. Um, once you actually loosen them, they kind of like spin around. You can see right there, they, they kind of spin around. So when you're trying to clip this to the AMD retainer, kind of a pain in the butt. So I wish they kind of just like you could lock them into place and then like unhook them and then unlock them or whatever, but you kind of have to let them kind of move freely because if you don't, then you won't have enough space to actually clip it on to your AMD retainers. Now that we went over the design, how to install the cooler, I want to run you guys through some performance numbers. But before we do that, 
I need to let you guys know how I tested this. So we used it on an open air test bench. I used the Ryzen 5 3600 clock that adds four gigahertz at 1.2 volts. Now I'm going to stop right here. I'm going to mention, I know that I could push the Ryzen 5 3600 further when it comes to overclocking and even just using like these stock clocks for the Ryzen 5 3600 would likely push this cooler. And it actually does push this cooler and other coolers a lot more. That's not what we're looking for here. What we're looking for here is the spread. So we're looking for how does the Arctic 7X do? compared to, you know, the stock AMD Wraith Prism or the, the Wraith Stealth or the Wraith Spire, you know, what's the spread? How much better do they get? And the problem with using just the stock settings on the Ryzen 3000 series chips is that your CPU on the Ryzen 3000 series chips will push further depending on how much headroom thermally it has. So even though this might be decreasing temperatures by say 10 degrees Celsius, it might actually only show a five degrees Celsius spread because the clock speeds are actually pushing higher when we're using the Ryzen 5 3600 with this cooler versus like the Ryzen 5 3600 with the RAID Stealth, for example. So that's why I set it to a four gigahertz so we can get consistency and we can actually see what the spread between each cooler and determine which coolers were actually better. Along with that, we use the MSI B450 Tomahawk Max. This is one of my favorite boards. Um, it's what I have on my test bench. That's what we use. And then I also had a MSI 1660 Super Gaming X graphics card. Now it's not that big of a deal. It's not going to really influence much, but I didn't want to let you guys know that it was there because again, we did do gaming testing today. So, you know, that, that could potentially influence the temperatures, even though it is an open air test bench. So before we get into the actual performance numbers, both noise, as well as cooling performance, I do like to show you guys what it sounds like. Um, as this cooler gets louder. So just like my other videos, I have clips of it going from 30% all the way to 100% in intervals of 10. So 30%, 40%, 50%, and so forth. So I'm gonna show you guys that. And then we're also gonna show you what it sounds like compared to the Wraith Prism and the Wraith Stealth under a heavy load. And this will give you an idea of, you know, if you leave your fan curve at a default fan curve, kind of like what each cooler is going to do for you and how much quieter, because this one is substantially quieter than the other two, how much quieter this cooler is. Okay, so like I said before, this cooler is substantially quieter than the other two, as you guys probably heard from the noise clips that I put in there. Again, those clips were not altered at all. I boosted the gain just so you guys could hear it a little bit better, but that's all I did for those clips. So with my testing, I like to do three different tests, one with ADA64 at stock fan curve, one with ADA64 um, under noise normalized 40 dBA, um, and then I like to use a gaming test. So this is just me playing some games, where is the coolers, temperatures, and noise is falling for that. So for A to 64 stock fan curve, the Arctic Freezer 7X was tied with the Scythe Katana 5. So these are both small form factor, single tower coolers. They look very similar when it comes to the same shape and size but they performed very similarly in this test. The maximum temperature that either cooler got to was 64.8 degrees Celsius. However, the Freezer 7 Act actually performed better for the average temperature, only clocking in at 63.2 degrees Celsius. So this was the lowest out of all the coolers for an average temperature during the 8064, again, default fan curve test. Take a look at the noise normalized testing at the 40 decibels. This is where this one actually really spreads its wings a little bit. The Freezer 7 X max out at just 65 degrees Celsius, which was the lowest of all the coolers I tested here today and averaged only 62.7 degrees Celsius, 
which is also the lowest of all the coolers I tested here today. The Scythe Katana 5, although it did perform pretty well, had a maximum temperature during the test that was two and a half degrees Celsius more than the Arctic Freezer 7, and then its average temperature was about 3.3 degrees Celsius more than the Arctic Freezer 7. In gaming, this story is a little bit different. So the Freezer 7X did fine, it maxed out at 56.6 degrees Celsius, had an average temperature of 48.8 degrees Celsius, and it was super quiet with only 35 decibels of noise output. So that's five decibels over my noise floor. But it didn't perform better than the Scythe Katana 5, which performed really, really well while gaming, and it only had a maximum temperature of 50 0.8 degrees Celsius and average temperature of 47.7 degrees Celsius. However, the big kicker here and the reason why this actually happened was because the Katana 5 has a more aggressive fan curve, something like this, which again, the fans don't spin as fast as something like the Scythe Katana 5s. And so the Arctic Freezer 7X, it's small, it's quiet, and it has pretty solid performance over the current AMD stock coolers. Intel stock coolers, it would do a lot better. Again, I don't have an Intel based system here, but the stock cooler for Intel, when they do have them, they're, they're small, they're, they're inadequate, they don't do, even do a great job. So this cooler would do a lot better for th those situations as well. The problem I find with a cooler like this is that the Hyper 212 from Cooler Master, the Hyper 212 Black Edition, is only about $35, so about $12 more. Now that's like a 50% price hike compared to this guy right here, but because it's only like a $12 difference, I found myself having a hard time figuring out exactly where this cooler belongs. Because I think it's a cool cooler, I think it's a nice cooler, I like the cooler, and I think the performance is a lot better than I actually expected when I first started taking a look at the cooler. And of course that's based on just like the size of the cooler, how many heat pipes, just the design in general, I didn't expect to see as good of results as we did here today. And so here's what I think about this cooler. This cooler is worth a look if you are on a tight budget, have limited space within your case and want a good performing quiet, I think quiet is super important here, option. Because if you can't fit like a larger, single tower cooler like the Hyper 212, for example, you're not gonna be able to really find a good cooler that's compact and relatively cheap. For example, a low profile cooler like the Big Shirkin 3 that I did a review on a few months back, that thing comes in around 50 bucks and it performs just about the same as the Freezer 7X. Again, this is a like a $22, $23 CPU cooler and it is more compact than the Hyper 212. It's more compact than a lot of the other single tower coolers, even the budget ones. So in my opinion, if you're on a tight budget and you need a nice, small, compact cooler that's nice and quiet, again, I think this is a good option for you guys if you don't have all that space to throw one of the more expensive, but a little bit better CPU coolers into your case. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button if you loved it. Be sure to subscribe for more content just like this. And if you have any questions at all, either drop them in the comments below or check out our community Discord page, which is completely free. There's a link in the description box below. You can go there. You can ask your questions on our community Discord form as well, because we have people that are absolutely wonderful and they love helping out new builders other builders anybody really they just want to help people out so they're there go ahead join the discord we're trying to grow it so we can keep helping people pick the best parts for their upcoming builds hope you guys all have a wonderful rest of your day and i'll see you guys later